So welcome to Self-Reliance and Food Storage. Uh, I'm Kelly Wilkins and thank you so much for joining me tonight. It's really important um, times that we're in that we're discussing these things. Um, it, 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 we are facing some new challenges and uh, I'm sure we're all feeling a bit that the future is a little bit uncertain at the moment, um, but also this is the time that we have to prepare ourselves for whatever eventuates. And, you know, we've got summer around the corner and usually in Australia there's a, an emergency of some kind. Um, and so if, even if we were in normal conditions, this would still be an important conversation, but now we're finding ourselves in all kinds of um, uh, political uncertainty, upheaval, medical, the rest of it. So I'm so glad that you we're all here together and we can um, discuss these topics and we can support each other. And the main thing that we that I want to do as we go forward is create communities. So the more people that we can have together in these calls, uh, how we're finding lockdown is that, you know, if we're only able to move five kilometres, then you really do need people who are close by in your community who you can trade with, for instance. So um, last week we talked about our gardens and what we can grow. So you might have a, a bunch of lettuces and maybe you can't eat all those lettuces, but maybe your neighbor might have beans and you can trade with your, I'm saying neighbor, but it might be you know down the street or in the next suburb. Um, but as we're able to do that, it won't matter what happens in, um, you know, with, with the shops or with the economy or with, um, if your bank gets wiped out, you know, we need to have our own economy going on. And if we can future proof our life, um, food is where it starts, food and water, because without that, you know, how long can we survive, right? So we start with the very basics and that's what you can do in your own garden, what you can do with your cupboards to make sure that you are future-proofing at least at least a couple of days um, with our. I'm going to we're going next in the next few weeks we're going to get into our 72-hour kit. So you've got survival packs, and then also with our uh, food storage. So you would if you could build up from three months to a year's worth of food storage, that is ideal. So, so we do have some people on tonight who have been doing this and um, and so we're just going to run through some basic tips, first of all, and what you need to know when you're getting started and then we'll open it up and if anyone has any other really great suggestions and ideas and we can collaborate. So let me share my screen with you. Okay, so I love this picture of this um, shelving because it's very tidy and organized. You can see where exactly where everything is and you can, you can start to see what you have and what you don't have. Now, if everyone had this much space, how good would it be? I am completely aware that people are living in all kinds of different situations and not everyone has a, a, you know, a garage, size or a spare room or um, other things. So let's have a look at how we can do it depending on your situation. Okay. Oh, let me just see how I can do that. Okay, so space is the number one thing that we need to be aware of. Where are you gonna store your food? How much space do you have? So if you don't have a lot of space, like I said, in the garage, in a, a, um, you don't want to store it in your pantry. Your pantry is for your 
day-to-day -day items. So we're talking about a food storage that's aside from that. You, uh, but depending on your situation, you might want to get creative. I've heard of people storing their food under their beds, for instance. Um, other, uh, maybe they've got space in the laundry. Maybe you can rework, redesign some of your space, declutter. You know, before I got my food storage happening, I really had to um, get rid of a few things first, reorganize the garage, make some shelving. So, and there's no point buying a whole lot of food until you, you've you got your space allocated for that. Then containers. Um, and you, you can see, kind of in this blurry picture, there's different containers used. Uh, plastic is not fat as fat and, and cardboard is not ideal. It's good for short term. It's good for if those foods that if you're going through quickly and you're rotating them, that's fine. But when you're looking for upward storage um, from six months onwards, then glass containers are the best. Um, sealed containers, that means that your rodents and pests and um, pest, pest, you know, all the bugs can't get into. It's going to matter where you live in terms of the humidity in the air, the cold, the damp, um, making sure that uh, that that the food is not going to be um, going off and mouldy more quickly. So these are some things to consider. And then how much do you need to store? Well, how much you need to store depends on how many living in your household. Uh, how many meals, if you're thinking about, how, you might have a household of two, you might have five, you might have seven, you need to cater for three meals a day, maybe for seven people, maybe for three months. That's gonna be very different than if you're just a house of two. Yeah, so think about what your storage needs are. Okay. So I talked about climate. Um, how does your climate affect your storage? Uh, and then rotation. So your rotation system, you can get quite creative um, and this will, will put some ideas into the group. But being able to use the items um, that you purchase um, first, you want to be able to use them first and the items that you purchase last go in later. So there's a hot, there's this canning system, if you're using cans, where you can put your can in the, the top, it rolls down the bottom and then you pick up the one at, at the bottom. And then that way you know that you're always taking from the bottom and rotating it best that way. It's going to work different for different things. But And then, um, so planning your meals. So when you're thinking about planning, um, I'm going to give you a little tip for that. Um, okay, here we go. Step one, you want to write down what your family normally has for meals. So you might want to plan two weeks ahead, or you might want to plan and, and look back over what did we eat the last two weeks. Write out those recipes, see what overlaps, see what's different about those, the food that you're eating. And then think about, okay, I want to purchase two weeks worth of food. What does that look like? Make, put that on your shopping list. Um, and it sh you should include foods like rice, pasta, beans, um, flour, as part of those meals, some things that you that if you you might be cooking all from fresh produce now, but if you want to store food, then some of those foods need to be longer storage um, foods that you can purchase. Okay, so then you're going to go and purchase these extra items to build up your supply. Now, depending on your budget, you might want to purchase a week, a whole week's worth of food 
that can all go into storage. But if your budget is a little bit less, maybe you want to just add a couple of those items alongside of your normal shopping um, so that you're just, just collecting and adding a bit as you go. Keeping an eye on what's on special, what's at a discount, maybe purchasing more of those things that are on a discount when they are and saving up some of those other items maybe for, for when they become on a discount. Okay, then step three, this is the principle of um, FIFO, not fly in fire, but first in, first out. So rotating those items um, and checking for use by dates. So I have now um, got my system, my food will last me, all my use by dates are up till January. Sometimes they will go through to March or even mid next year. I know that when I go shopping now, I'm you looking for use by dates that are, are beyond that so that I can put them in beyond behind um, what I've got stocked up. Okay, so long term planning. Once you get your short term planning a little bit under your belt, then you can start to look at um, look. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I'm just checking my chat to make sure anyone that's entering can enter because since I am doing my share, I can't see. All right. Uh, okay, Linda, you're all right. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, so you can start to build on, get your short-term storage done and then start to build on that as you go. Um, you don't need to go crazy, you just need to be a little bit consistent and thoughtful and planning. The better planning you can do, the more uh, and organised you can be, then foods won't go to a waste. Now, it's really important that before you even get started, maybe you need to do an audit of your pantry. Find out what's in there, pull everything out, um, organize it back into, have a look at use by dates that of stuff that you've already got in there. They might be able to make way for new food that might've been in there for way too long. You might've decided that would, was gonna be a good idea, but you haven't eaten it in six months. Well, then don't use that as, an, as a, a go-to item for your food storage because it's not a meal that your family normally has now. Um, you want to then eat, meal plan for the stuff that you have got so you're not wasting the food that you have got. If it's not out of date, use it up. Um, find the recipes and put those recipe, like make up your meal plan, get that happening. I really love, like I said in the early stages, that if we can make community events a thing, um, then, I know some groups before lockdown were getting together and church groups and doing frozen food cooking. So making up bulk meals and putting them in the freezer. Well, we can also think of this in terms of um, community co-ops. I know in the Hills area, we've got some um, shopping, some grocery sorts of, what do you call, um, the fruit and veggie co-ops where you can put in and, and purchase and even get them delivered. So there's lots of things that you can do in already businesses that are set up who um, are, are doing this already. So yeah, check that out. Karina said shelf reliance. Yes, I love that. Okay. And let me go to the next page. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the things that you can store pretty easily and that will last a year. So dried beans, white and brown rice, steel cut oats are very good for you, uh, canned fruit, canned veggies, canned meat. So now we can um, have tuna or chicken as well, uh, powdered milk. Um, so these are some of your definite must-haves. Baking soda, sugar, and oil as well as butter. Um, 
you do you want to have those basics down if you can get those basics down then you can make meals out of those salt and pepper variety of seasonings and spices dried meat um, my family loves beef jerky um, so go to town on those pasta noodles of course they're easy to store tomato sauce peanut butter jams and jellies instant mashed potato that's a good one to store um, honey muesli stock cubes tea and coffee and condiments such as ketchup mustard barbecue sauces etc so when you get together your food storage and you have these things set up what's really great about it is that when you're ready to cook your meal you're going to your own cupboard rather than going for a shop um, and so we're, we're pretty much I don't know about you but uh, you know going to the shop every couple of days can get expensive because you're buying things that you didn't plan on but when you plan out your shopping and you can actually shop less frequently you're going to save a lot of money especially if you don't take the kids to the shop with you <laughs> they, they put always put extra things in now if you are going to be locked down for any amount of time that and and not be able to get to the shops make sure you add chocolate in there as well um, and also um, in like a packet cake mix they're really handy to have uh, and because you do want to have a bit of variety in your food you don't want to have just you know you'll go crazy you just have keep it fun um, but do shop um, you go saving money it's it's been the best thing to go okay what do I want to cook I'll just go into the cupboard find what I want grab it out it's been so good to have started this food storage um, okay and then lastly no not lastly there you go um, I'm going to stop my share screen now and then open it up for questions and comments um, anyone want to ask anything or let us know where you're up to in your food storage does it does anyone have has anyone never started their food storage okay Karina says there's a lot of foods that you don't eat on a daily basis so it's hard to rotate them uh, let me just open up that chat so I can see it um, but you want to be rotating the foods that from that for the store so yeah when you're not eating pastas and and that's right some dried carbs so I'm like you Karina I'm I'm not big on my pasta I'm not big on flour even um, you know I've been gluten free for a long time and so to go to some of these foods is quite tricky now because I really like to um, to have a lot of fresh and yeah that can be not fun when you're looking at at just existing on your food storage alone but I will say um, that how to, how do you get your greens in well I belong to a company um, where I purchase my greens um, 37 greens in a scoop um, and you know reds yellows blues so that in in a powder form which I put in my smoothies or have as a drink and so there are ways that you can um, be purchasing really good nutritious foods I actually because I'm I'm not I'm gluten free um, I have a, a protein shake that gives me lots of vitamins and minerals and um, and a good dose of protein because that's really important so having something like that that stores really well so this is part of my food storage um, my greens that forms part of my food storage um, and so having that really great nutrition the foods in there that these are very basic ideas that I've given you but there are companies that really source some really good nutrition that stores really well as well okay can I open it up to something's happened to my screen um, okay 
Ruslan says you can easily grow some greens in pots and check if there's any edible weeds in your property. Yes. So last week we talked about gardening and how we having your pots around the house so that you can start you growing your tomatoes and, and um, you know, there's all kinds of things that you can be growing around your house that you can get fresh is, is absolutely the way to go. Kelly. Karina, yes. Um, so like we, regarding food storage and gardening, um, so I think like gardening is useful for some types of crisis situations and other types of crisis situations um, it definitely won't do. Um, like I know that you can do canning and things like that. I don't know if I would actually do canning. Um, but like if you grow a, an oversupply of some some foods, like you can uh, you can um, put uh, put them into cans so that you can keep them long term and have access to them later. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there are I, I guess there are different types of situations where you need um, food in different ways. So for example, like if there was floods or if there was um, fire or or whatever. If there was floods and your property got flooded, then you're not going to have access to your garden. So you need to be prepared in, in all of those situations. Absolutely. That's right. And, um, yeah, because we just never know the situation that we're going to be faced with. So being able to have that, have that uh, flexibility is absolutely um, brilliant. And... Um, and whilst you are growing some things in, in your pots and you can, if you can, um, there's a, one of the resources in, in the chat is um, how, to, how you can layer up your veggies in a jar and keep them um, for six months in a jar and then you can use them for, you know, making, making soups or making um, your spaghetti bolognese and all those good things too. So Linda says uh, cold pressed hemp oil, um, cooking with it. Okay, because with it's good on high temperatures, is it Linda? Do you wanna, can you talk or? Pickled veggies, yes. So has anyone um, got any skills around pickled veggies? Mm. I'm actually going to learn that my neighbour pickles all his stuff, but because of lockdown, he hasn't, but I started getting the cans and stuff. Very cool. Very I cool. Well, maybe you can do a video for us. Yes, and we... definitely. Yeah. I just wanted to say um, the person who said that they, um, they don't cook with a lot of things, um, I have just, like, I've actually swapped out two days of the week that I cook um, food, canned, like canned food preparations. Um, I've got the recipes. I haven't printed them, but um, because um, a book that I was reading was saying that um, don't buy what you don't cook, um, don't store what you don't cook. Yeah. Um, so I need to introduce these things to my children, especially because they're fussy. Um, it's really hit and miss but it's, um, it's helping to develop those recipes. So when the time comes, yeah, they're fine. They've had it before. And even though it's not great, but they've had it before. So they also won't have like any um, reactions, like they won't have upset tummies or any of that. So that's something that we've implemented in our home. Yeah, brilliant. I love that. Thank you for sharing that because, uh, and, and kids are a funny one, aren't they? Because they, if they haven't had it before and all of a sudden we're introducing something, then you're right, the the allergies and the all kinds of different things that we could be dealing with that you hadn't dealt with before. My kids are terrible. They don't even like leftovers. So, so um, yeah, funny. this situation is going to be... It's Linda. I unmuted myself. I couldn't work it out. It's hard to navigate on my phone. Okay. Um, with the hemp oil, no, more like putting in your food, like to use in your food. You can put it in yogurt and things, but it's really high in all the omegas, like, you know, omega-3, omega-6, omega-12. It's really, really good. Okay. Uh, so it's like if, if you can't access fish or things like that, you know what I mean? Like, Right, just, how to get your omegas in. 
yes, just having that daily is um, a really good, you know, yeah. And it's, they, they used to have it in glass bottles, now it comes in plastic bottles. Or you can buy it in big tins. Like the, the sort of more you buy, the cheaper it becomes. And it comes from Queensland. The company's been going for about 40 years, pure delight, up in Queensland. And it's, yeah, I just put it in yogurt uh-huh. or I just have a tablespoon of it. Do you buy it online or do you, I, can online. you buy this thing? Yeah, okay. Is, online is... or you can phone them. You can, they've got a phone number as well. So you can either phone them or do it online. And it normally is here within a few days, like, you know, from ordering it. They ship it straight out. If you get in before 12, it gets shipped that day. Yep. To you. So it's a few days and, and you've got it sort of in you know in your hands but it's also good for my I don't know if I ever told you my son had eczema when he was a baby we tried everything cortisone was the only thing that worked but we didn't want to keep using cortisone and uh-huh. my brother actually suggested that I put you know the cold com- the cold compressed hemp-, hemp oil on him but um it's it's like brown it's earthy and it tastes earthy and it smells earthy obviously and it stains all your clothes but he after a year of just rubbing it in him every day he no longer has ever had eczema so Wow, amazing. So I, so it's got the skin, the skin as well. So. so we just had a few people join us while I was doing the presentation. So can everyone just type into the chat where you're from? So Irina and Pete Jules, I didn't get to say welcome you and say hello to you earlier, but if everyone can type in the chat um, where you're from so we can, we, we want to start to build these communities. So... Health food stores you can buy it from. Thanks, Atta. Um, do you think, Kelly, that we could have um, like a night or maybe in the chat where people share what vitamins and stuff that, because that's something that's super important. Obviously, we're not going to be able to get all the nutrients for our families um, from canned food, um, because that's definitely something that I would 100% be interested in um, myself. So I don't know if anyone else feels the same way. Yeah, so um, that's one of the things that I, well, the company that I've been working with for the last 15 years, Living Ear, is all about nutrition and how how to um, get nutrition in and uh, in and gut health and because that's one of the things that is really, you know, we need to keep up our gut health and uh, to feel to for our immune system and for our energy and for um, our clear thinking, you know we do not want um, fuzzy thinking in these days and times, do we? We want lots of energy. So, so yes, yeah, so I will happily do a, a, a special evening just for our group on nutrition um, and how we can really cook some really great recipes and things that we can use um, and how we can get high nutrient dense food um, and be able to store it as well. So let me just see in the chat. Thank you for asking about that, Lavinia, that's awesome. Mung beans are good to have, easy to sprout. Uh, Mung beans is very versatile. You add them to your salad for stir fry, very good. So, I have not cooked a whole lot with mung beans, but um, yeah, you know, that is a really good protein. Um, And you're right, you can, it's really, it's a good one to have winter or summer. Brilliant. Let's see what else comments we have. Feel free to come off mute um, and to share with us. Jules from Toowoomba, thank you, Jules. It's lovely to have you here. Um, if you're watching the replay or just joined us, if you haven't filled in the survey um, in the group, please go ahead and do that. It helps us to see where you're from, what you're interested in, what you want to find out about, and um, then we can cater this, this these sessions to you. So, so hi. Kelly. Karina. Hi. Um, so we are, we're in the process of building a, um, a cupboard or like a butler's pantry, uh, for, um, actually for the purpose of storing all of our food so that it's not a typical butler's pantry. Um, but we are 
going to be um, having like a double-sided cupboard so that you can access it from one side to to put the food in and then uh, from the inside is where you, you take the food out. So um, it will be like a sliding um, sliding cupboard from the outside. Um, so then you're always putting the food in the back and entry, um, and then taking the food out from the front. Oh, um, so yeah, that's something that I actually grew up. My parents did that um, in their house. They had access to the the, the food storage pantry um, from uh, their laundry, and so they were able to access it from the wall, the lawn, um, the wall in the laundry, and then uh, in the kitchen they were able to uh, get their food out. So, but another another way to uh, like rotate tins. Um, just just tins um, is the Shelf Reliance brand. So if you if you search up Shelf Reliance, then that's that's the type of um, already pre-made um, system. You can buy little ones, you can buy big ones, um, uh, depending on on your budget or, or you know how much you want to store. So yeah, Google Shelf Reliance. That's something that I've considered. You can actually like I've seen different things on Pinterest where you can make your own um, like tin rotation system. But like I'm looking at all types of rotation. I don't like putting things from the front to the back. I find it kind of awkward. I'd like to be able to enter a cupboard both sides, um, ideally. Um, in terms of um, rotation as well, um, like you want to be buying foods, as you were saying, that you eat regularly. and I've often thought about like I'm I'm I like systems I like things to be automated as much as possible, um, so that I don't have to keep making decisions and and then fixing things up and so on. And um, part of um, part of the way that I want things to function um, is that my food storage is very very close to my pantry cupboard, so that when I do my grocery shopping, um, my grocery shopping actually goes straight into my my food storage. And it's inside rather than the garage. Um, and then I pull out the front of my food storage and then transfer that into the pantry so that um, I'm always constantly rotating um, my food storage. And each time I grocery shop, um, the, the ideal is, um, like we're building the system at the moment, but the ideal is that um, what, what is out the front of the, of the cupboard goes straight into uh, the pantry, the everyday pantry cupboard for what we use. That so, is brilliant. I yeah. love that. Yeah. So well, I share that. Yeah, thank you. And when we redesign, when we build next and, re and design our next home, I'm going to definitely steal that idea. I love that. So it makes it so uh, streamlined. Yeah, I love, I love things that are just systemized and efficient. Oh, wow. You just blown my mind there. Hey, but girls, you're just like, we can all have one of those d properly designed bustler pantries. You could just straight in, straight out. I love that. I'm going to do that. Definitely. I have a question. Does anyone use the Mylar bags? <sighs> ah, good question. I researched that before coming on tonight. Um, and they are very good because they're very good for, um, Lavinia, do you want to tell everyone what they look like and what they're for? Oh, I can show you. I have a couple. Oh, you have one there? Mm -hmm. Something's happened to my screen. Can everyone see Lavinia? Yeah, just food. Um, yeah, just food safety bags. Um, the, I actually got this from the church website. I didn't realise how big they were. Yeah. Um, but uh, these prolong, once you decant everything, you see, these prolong your food um, products, some of them for, um, I think a book I was reading said from between 10 to 30 years. Um, wow. And yeah, well, I, I just got it because I also got the oxygen absorbers as well, because I'm going to, um, I'm going to be trying the powdered milk. So um, sister, I can't pronounce her name, but I bought her book 
she suggested that um and my parents had used it so I saw it on the church website and I got it but I haven't actually packed it yet so I just wanted to see so, Lavinia some people are maybe on their phone and maybe they can't scroll guys if you scroll if you push your screen to the left you might be able to see Lavinia's or to the right I don't know um see Lavinia's picture I can't see it because something has happened to my screen I hope that the recording will pick it up so we can play it back. It's just a silver food grade um, storage bag um, that you use with um, the oxygen absorbers to yeah prolong your um, food. Yeah they're amazing. Virginia do you have a sealer as well? What do you use to seal it? So i I already have a vacuum sealer, which I was I was packaging our stuff when I bought it in bulk in the um, the just it's just a, um, a one I got from Aldi Target. Um, oh. Yeah, but the Aldi one, yes. And I was using that, but um, they said that you could use it on here. So uh, they're called Mylar bags, and I actually got this from. Oh, I'm. I, I got it from the church website, the Church of Jesus of Latter-day Saints, the food storage. Um, I just got it to see how big they were. They were quite big, so I'll share the link. We'll put. I don't know how you spell Myla, but how uh, Myla Myla M Y L A R. I think um a thing to consider also uh with that I, um i'm not 100 percent certain but i think um like mice rats can break through that material so yeah. i will um definitely seal the food um but then um i think it's worth then storing them in like in containers and buckets now yeah, yeah. Um, that's true that's true i've actually got um the uh the blue blue tin um blue tins to go in Sorry, my son, I'm just going to mute myself. That's all right. Yeah, so that's a really good point. Um, and, you know, uh, probably uh, pest controlling the, your area is going to be a really, you know, some people have that consideration as well. So do take in whatever you need to do first to set your, your area up. Um, fortunately, I don't have anything like that here, not any spiders, but... Yeah, make sure you, you're you being able to seal everything so that it doesn't get eaten. So, um, any to consider as well, um, it went before you store, say, rice or flour or oats or um, whatever whatever dry food that, that you, you're storing, um, I have to double check the amount of time, but it's um worthwhile killing all the bugs by putting them putting them it into the freezer and I think it's 48 hours. So when you bring something home from um from the the store, pop it straight into the freezer for 48 hours. You have to double check like the actual time. Um, and then then it's good to store. You've killed the bugs, you've killed the eggs hopefully. Um, and then yeah, because I think when you bring something home, I think there is like a, a baseline of bugs in the food anyway. Um, so uh, you want to just make sure that everything is is out um, and prepared, ready, ready to store the food. Yeah, bay leaves are really good. You can put bay leaves in there as well. I did um, bring up some information that I wanted to share with you on that, but um, what I'll do is I'll copy it into the group um, and so that we've got some of that really good basic information for those who are not watching. I think that um, I apologise in advance if there's a big white something across my screen when the recording goes. I just I can't really figure out how come it's there. But yeah, and oxygen absorbers. Yes, thanks, Lavinia. That's really great. Um, what are they called? Those little pouches that take take the moisture out as well. Yeah, they're probably all on the same site too, Lavinia. So we'll get that link up so that people can see how you got those and what else is on on there as well. 
that people can purchase. There's a lot of resources that you've posted up on the chat and it's, um, I guess it takes time to go through and, and see and everyone's constantly posting stuff, which is great. Um, but, you know, everyone's got their time demands and it's hard to see um, everything because it's well, going on. So I'm just wondering, have you considered uh, like creating a simple website and just putting um, the resources there so you can do searches and things like that, just make it more. Yeah, simple. so there's two groups, Telegram. Um, and so if you don't want to see all the chat that happens, then go to, um, there's a link pinned at the top of the food storage and self-reliance, and that link will take you to self-reliance and food storage, and there you won't have all the chat that goes on. You'll just have the resources. But you're right, Karina, and I am going to create a website for this. Um, and also, um, drum roll, my big plan is to create packs, pre-purchased packs of things, get, get getting started, packs that really have, have everything in there that you need, um, and that, but that's down the track. So for right now, go to the... The other group, it's called Self Reliance and Food Storage, and there you'll find week by week um, the information. So last week was all about um, gardening, what to do in your garden, and this week will be all about the food storage. Uh, and so there is a bit of summing through um, as those things go, uh, but then until we get the website up and running, that'll be the way to find it. Beautiful. Well, is there any other questions or suggestions or ideas um, before we wrap up tonight? I just wanted to say hello to Atta. I haven't seen her since she left the ponds. <laughs> <laughs> and I just realised it was her there. <laughs> there you go. Oh, this is the great place to meet up. So that's beautiful. <laughs> we will be here every Tuesday, 8pm, um, and talking about a different subject um, so the, I know food storage is a big one um, and then I thought that maybe next week we might talk about 72 hour kits unless someone else has anything else more pressing that they'd like to um, learn. I love to learn Atta's how to make sauerkraut um, and you know that comes from the homeland so we'd love to learn about that one. Um, so we could always do that on, on the next Tuesday night. So. All right, so be here again next week. We're so pleased to have you tonight and looking forward to um, connecting now. If you did write your suburb in the chat and you, there's someone else in your area, do connect with them and reach out. Um, there are some groups on Telegram who that are already set up with people in different LGAs. Uh, and so I'm happy to um, connect you in the LGAs so that you are having people close by who are like-minded, who who are up to the same purposes that we're up to. So, um, so do stay in touch on our our chat and also with each other. So, thank you everyone for attending tonight. Lavinia, I will, <laughs> we need to get you some friends in Melbourne, definitely. So the idea is add more people into the Telegram group and then, you know, you know people that live in Quakers Hill that I don't know, so you're going to introduce me to them and I'm going to introduce you to people in Melbourne and, and uh, Wellington and Parramatta and all the great places we're from, so Riverston. <laughs> Beautiful. And I and I will be looking for hub leaders. So Lavinia, it looks like you'd be a great hub leader in Melbourne um, for people to connect to and be able to use as the resource person in your area. Um, that's going to be super important it's moving forward. So thank you again, everyone, for getting on tonight. Thank you. Really, really appreciate it. All right, I'll put this recording into the chat. All right. Have a good week, Thank everyone. You. Good, good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.